and basically in this section we will focus on the sequences which is something we use normally in computer science and also the summations where basically we use a for loop normally in computer science or in computer code to calculate it but let us understand the mathematical foundation of sequences and summation so what we mean by a sequence is basically an ordered list of elements like one two three five and eight and this is could be go all the way to infinity or it just basically talking about a subset of elements um, let's say you can take the even numbers from 1 to 100 or the odd number from 1 to 100 as a sequence now the mathematical definition of sequences a sequence is a function and normally we take a form of that function from a subset of integers whether starting from 0 1 2 3 4 or 1 2 3 4 to a set any set capital S and the notation a subscript n is used to denote the image of the integer n and we can think of a, a of n as a function f from the subset 0 1 2 to the capital S and we call this a of n normally a term of the sequence let us take an example so consider the sequence a subscript of n where a of n equals to 1 divided by n in this case a of n could be a1 second term a2 third term a3 now take when a uh, the term a1 take when we have n equals to 1 this is going to be 1 divided by 1 so the first term is going to be 1 now when n equals to 2 this is going to be 1 divided by 2 when n equals 3 is 1 divided by 3 so a3 is 1 third and a4 is 1 fourth and so on a famous sequence is called geometric progression and the geometric progression normally takes the form where we have the first term a the second term is a multiplied by r the third term is going to be a multiplied by r to the power 2 all the way to a multiplied by r to the power n as an example to understand geometric let's say we have a equals to 1 and r equals to minus 1 in this case if you take a sequence like b of n b0 is going to be a1 based on the definition um, and this is equals to 1 now b1 is going to be a multiplied by r so this is going to be 1 multiplied by minus 1 so it's going to be minus 1 in the result there b2 is going to be a multiplied by r to the power 2 and this is going to be 1 multiplied by minus 1 to the power 2 which is 1 and you will see that this sequence is basically 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 and so on if you take the sequence c of n and in this case you have a equals to 2 and r equal to 5 c0 in this case is going to be a c1 is going to be a multiplied by r and in this case is going to be 2 multiplied by 5 which is 10 and if you take the third term which is basically 5 5 to the power 2 is 25 multiplied by 2 this is going to be 50 now take d of n and in this case d of n a equals 6 and r equal 1 third so the first term is going to be a which is 6 the second term is going to be a multiplied by r which is 6 multiplied by 1 third which is 2 and now the other type is called arithmetic progression and in this arithmetic progression is a sequence of the form where we take a then a plus d then a plus 2d all the way to a plus n d and the initial term a and the common differences d are basically real numbers in this case so if you take a minus 1 and d equal 4 and you have a sequence like s of n in this case s of 0 is going to be a s1 is going to be minus 1 plus d4 which is a 3 s2 is going to be a minus 1 
plus 2d 4 which is 8 plus minus 1 is 7 if you try to take another terms like a equals 7 and d minus 3 in this case the first term t0 refers to 7 because this is only a now t1 is going to be 7 plus d so 7 plus minus 3 equals to 4 and so on strings that we use in computer science are a finite sequence of characters and they are basically a form of sequences normally we refer to the empty set as lambda and the string a b c d e has a length of 5 considering that we start by counting 1 2 3 4 5 now we use sequences with recursion and with recursive relationship the sequence a of n is the equation that expresses a of n in terms of one or more of the previous terms so you, to find out a1 we need to know a0 to find uh, a of n we need to know n a of n minus 1 and all integers n where we have n is greater than or equal to n0 that's a condition and the second condition n0 should be a non-negative integer consider a of n to be a sequence that satisfies the recursion relationship a n equals a n minus 1 plus 3 so we need to take every previous term and add it to 3 now the assumption that we have n goes from 1 2 3 4 all the way to infinity and we need to be given the initial which is a of 0 equals to 2 and in this case a1 is basically equal to a0 plus a 3 which equal to 2 plus a 3 equals to 5 now if you want to have a2 you need to know a1 first and this is going to be 5 plus a 3 which equal 8 and so on now let us take another example where we have a, o, a of n a sequence that satisfies the recursion relationship a of n equal a of n minus 1 minus a of n minus 2 for the values n equals to 2, 3 and 4 and in this case I should be given a0 and a1. So a2 based on the definition equals to a1 minus a0 and a1 is 5, a0 is a 3 same for a3 is a2 minus a1 and this is equals to minus a3 a famous sequence that we normally give for computer science students to study recursion in any programming language is basically the Fibonacci sequence and in Fibonacci we have f0 f1 f2 all the way to infinity and the initial condition that f0 equals 0 and f1 equal 1 now the recursion relation said is f of n equal f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 now to find for example f of 2 we need to know f of 1 plus f of 0 and this is going to be 1 plus 0 which equals to 1 if you want to find f of 4 this is going to be f of 3 plus f of 2 which equals to 2 plus 1 which equals to 3 and so on similar to this we could use iteration or a loop to solve recursion where we start by taking the value of a of n in a sequence there is some useful sequences that i want you to refer and try to understand them and refer to this table to solve the the questions that you have in the assignments for example this is the sequence of n to the power 2 n to the power 3 the second subject for today is called summations and summation is basically a for loop where we sum um, a value inside the loop body and we have a sum of terms a of m a of m plus one all the way to a of n and we want to find the sum of all variables. we normally use the notation sigma and we say the initial value which is the loop counter initialization g equal m m in this case could be zero or one all the way for example to n and this is going to be a of i so if i want to sum all the values from 1 to 100 in this case n equals to 100 and m equals to zero and basically g is going to equal to zero consider the example where we have r to the power zero plus r to the power one all the way to r to the power n and we can just basically say that this is the sigma from 0 to n 
where the terms are r to the power j and you can take a substitution of all the value to find the sum between two numbers let's say 0 and 100 0 and 10 and so on another summation from 1 to infinity 1 divided by i so the term r1 1 over 2 1 over 3 all the way to infinity and if you have s as a well-defined term so you can have for example 2 5 7 and 10 then the summation is going to be a2 plus a5 a7 and a10 in this condition j belongs to a subset these are also a useful summation and useful information that you could refer to um, for solving summations equation let us take an example we want to use summation notation to express the sum of the first 100 terms of the sequence a of j where a of j equals to 1 divided by j for j equals 1 2 3 so we will start from j equals to 1 all the way to 100 with a sigma notation where 1 divided by j what is the final value of the sigma j equals to 1 all the way to 5 j to the power 2 you could resolve it by taking all the terms and you find the final value to be 55 another example is to take the value from k equals to 4 all the way to 8 where we have the uh, summation of minus 1 to the power k and this is going to be 1 and this is basically was um, a quick um, description of sequences and summation thank you for seeing this video and see you in the next one